Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard video. Today we will be continuing taking a look at the 8th edition reveals that Games Workshop has given us, specifically looking at them from an Imperial Guardsman's point of view and how they will be affecting us Imperial Guard commanders. Um, and once again, this isn't really done in any particular order, just in the order that I sort of think about the different things that are being revealed and uh, and just talking about them. That's all this is. That's just talking. We obviously still don't have the full big picture. That's a disclaimer I want to go with. We we don't have the full story yet. We're getting a general sense of how 8th edition will be. Um, but yeah, overall, um, this is what we're, we're just going to see how these things will affect uh, Imperial Guard. So today we're going to look at movement. So to give a quick rundown of what Games Workshop has revealed, uh, essentially, again, this is very similar. If those of you have ever played fantasy, this is sort of very similar to how fantasy used to do it. No longer will uh, movement be based on unit type. Each unit itself will have a specific movement value. So what I mean by that is, is no longer will all infantry move 6 inches and all vehicles sort of move 6 or 12 inches. Um, or even if you're a fast vehicle, you move 18 inches. No longer will that be the case. Every unit will have a unique movement stat. So for example, a Space Marine will be able to move something like 6 inches still, whereas a Guardsman will only be moving something like 4 inches, and uh, Elder will be moving like 8 inches, and Hormigants will be moving things like 9 or 10 inches. Okay, so, and that's, you know, and Orcs will be moving like 4, and blah, 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 blah. Basically, every single unit now has its own specific movement value. Now, I'm sure many of these will overlap, like, Probably an orc can move as fast as a guardsman if it wants to, or maybe it'll be able to move as fast as a space marine. So I'm sure there'll be lots of brackets, so there'll be lots of things that can move four inches and lots of things that can move five inches. But essentially, everything now has its own unique movement value, which is just like, uh, just like Warhammer Fantasy. Um, uh, so that's interesting. How that affects how that affects Imperial Guard. If I'm going to be honest, I imagine this will affect us quite badly. I imagine we will suffer in the movement phase now, um, especially from a pure infantry point of view. I don't know what the Imperial Guard movement value will be. Okay, I don't. But you can imagine it's not going to be very fast because it's a basic human. Um, you know, when you think about it, Imperial Guard, if you look at Imperial Guard as a faction where our army is made up of lots and lots of shitty units so all our stuff is going to have some of the worst stats we're just going to be able to use a lot of it so that's essentially yeah so we're probably going to get a bit shafted by the movement phase from an infantry standpoint you know let's be honest about this we're probably we're probably going to get shafted but uh am i against this Hmm. I'm neither for nor against it. Uh, it's it's an interesting change, but I don't think it's necessarily a game-breaking change. I think it does have the potential for some armies to be really overpowered. Um, because movement in a lot of war games, and this is true for video games as well, uh, movement is key. A lot of the time, being able to outmaneuver your opponent will uh, lead to quick and swift victories uh, so it may be a big problem for the guard I that's all I can say is I know I don't want to keep repeating myself but I think that guard will probably have quite a low movement stat um, so we will probably struggle a little bit in terms of objective based missions then again we don't know what kind of missions we're going to have so it might not be such a big deal but uh, yeah so I think movement's going to hurt us in some ways. Uh, they've also said some units will have a minimum move. But again this really only affects flyers. It may affect skimmers. That's just me uh, hypothesizing then. Hypothesizing? I can't say the word. That's me speculating. It may affect skimmers. It may affect jet bikes. I mean when you think about it. A jet bike shouldn't really just be able to go from full zoom to nothing in one go. Um, so... 
that may help us you know if you can predict where your opponent has to go if your if your opponent can't zip forward and backwards as much as he wants because he has to continue you know moving in a certain direction maybe who knows um but there is now minimum move values for certain units which will definitely be flyers i suspect jet bikes and possibly skimmers but not for sure um uh, another thing, running has been rolled into the movement phase. So many people did this anyway. I mean, how many people, how many Tyranny players, how many Orc players do you know that went, I'm going to move my army and at the same time, I'm just going to roll the run dice for each squad. So they've changed that now. Um, running has now been replaced with uh, advancing. So previously, what what they used to say was you would move in the movement phase and then run in the shooting phase and you would run instead of shooting. Now they just say you choose to advance and you move your movement plus you roll a dice and add that to your movement, but you can't shoot. It's exactly the same. Uh, so if you're, so it is exactly the same. So running is now rolled into the movement phase. And if you advance, uh, you can't shoot. That's as simple as it gets. Um, Interestingly, they said this this advanced mechanic applies to all models, infantry, vehicles, bikes, everyone. So um, that's interesting. It could be interesting. You know, maybe vehicles will move two d six. I don't know. Um, that I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, hmm. It'd be a bit rubbish if, if you've got a vehicle like a, a Hellhound, which is traditionally a, a fast vehicle, and it can only go an extra D6 to represent its super speed, whereas before it would be able to go an extra 12. That could potentially really neuter Hellhounds. Fast vehicles could get really badly neutered. Now, they probably can... A Hellhound will probably be able to, you know take into account the fact it has a unique movement value maybe a hellhound will still be able to zip all over the battlefield burn baby burning maybe but i am slightly concerned if they make the hellhound just a fairly standard vehicle and then oh look it gets to advance a random d6 forward uh not sure how i feel about that i quite like the current my current use of using our hellhounds which is you know i can move 12 fire my weapons all that kind of jazz um but we'll see. I think if the Hellhound has a really good base movement, then that will be. Or, or if I say if a lot of fast vehicles have quite a high base movement, that should alleviate any risks. Um, one last thing that they mentioned. This is the biggie, guys. This is a big, big potential buff for the Imperial Guard. Okay. Let me just read this in its entirety from the Warhammer 40k page. If you're in combat at the start of your turn, you can fall back by moving away from the enemy. You'll lose the ability to advance, shoot or charge that turn and crucially, enemies will be able to shoot at you. This does however open up a vast range of tactical armies of tactical options for armies like the Astra Militarum who will be able to effectively deploy in firing lines with each row falling back from any assaults in good order if they survived while the unit behind them fires at the attackers. It goes both ways though if you have a dedicated assault unit that specializes in killing infantry like warp talons your opponent will find it much harder to pin them down in combat with heavily armored units for the entire game. Blah, 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 blah. Right. That is... I don't know whether it's good or... But they say it's good for guard. And it, it, it potentially will be amazing for the guard. Because... Like they said... It's... Well, let me just... I can't even... I can't even I'm very excited about this. Number one. How fluffy... How cinematic is that? You know, you've got way, you know, how many times have you read in sort of Imperial Guard like books? I can remember it in one of the Cyphers Kane books when the uh, Turners invade, and in the Last Chances, the first book, when the, the Last Chances are trying to hold off some orcs. 
they deploy how many times have you wanted to deploy a sort of three ranks and have to you know f- fall back from the first from the first line defend the second line fall back from the second line defend the third line and it's cinematic and it's awesome we can now do that we can now no no longer will we have one like invisible death star kind of unit that comes in gets stuck into one of our blobs and stays stuck in combat we can't shoot it this i talked about invisible death stars getting a kick in the nut getting a bit of a debuff last time this seems like a kick in the nuts for that kind of army this this favors guard blobs but also favors kind of like multiple small units i mean imagine if someone charges in with you with sort of a big death star and they kill let's say 40 out of your 50 conscripts you just pull back with the in the beginning of your phase just the beginning of your turn just pull back with the remaining 10 maybe they'll get sh- gunned down as they try to run away as it sort of says here as you pull back the enemy can shoot at you okay but guess what i got now get to shoot the shit out of you again with my full army awesome I like it from a fluff point of view. I like how they we actually got a mention on a fucking a fucking page, um, and I like the fact that it does have tactical viability. You know, sometimes, however, I do like to bog my opponents down in in bodies, but maybe that sort of mentality will have to change a little bit now. Maybe instead, it will be more of you know, maybe instead it will be more of a, you know, you bend the line a little bit and then you shoot them and then you push back. Maybe. Um, I think it's, I think it will be very interesting and I think it'll be very different. Um, I, you know, maybe it'll go against the grain for a lot of guard commanders that, you know, maybe like to, you know, fight the last man and all that. You can still do that if you want to. And I'm sure, you know, it'll just mean that it's slightly less clear cut whether you want to be bogged down in combat or you know if your opponent might it's not entirely certain if he wants to get bogged down in combat or if he wants to you know fall back it's not entirely clear but it is very interesting all i can say is they've mentioned this from an imperial guardsman's point of view and that makes me happy so i just dropped my bottle of pop that makes me happy because it makes me feel like imperial guard are being thought about in this new edition because you know i think gaze workshop may have realized we've been having a hard time of it for a few years now i'm hoping that guard gets a big buff and this will definitely help us against invisible death stars if invisible death stars still exist this will definitely help us you know the ability to just shoot and shoot and shoot and feed them maybe a a few squads at a time i think it's good um I do honestly think it will make a big difference. I think that, you know, it might make Imperial Guard Assault Armies not as good. But it does it does work. I do like it. Um, but yeah, so overall, the movement phase, let's just go through it. Every unit having its own movement characteristic, I imagine Guard is going to be hit hard with that in a bad way. Because I imagine we're going to be really slow and we're going to struggle to get places. So I imagine that will be the, the actual movement phase itself will be a bit of a ball ache for us. Um, however, I do think the ability to to do a tact to, to to do a genuine tactical withdrawal is an interesting element in 40k, one which I've never been able to do properly as an Imperial Guard commander before, and I think it could open up a huge amount of possibilities. Anyway. Let me know what you guys think. I think the ability to have... I already do this sort of... I've talked about it in my videos. This three-line strategy where you have your conscripts up front, then your regular guards, and then your officers behind. I've been talking about this for, what, a year now? And I've been doing it for three or four years. And it's sort of... That's interesting how it's starting to be reflected in Gaze Workshop's uh, sort of rules. So that's interesting. We don't... I know I'm very excited about this, but let me add a little caveat. Let's just bring things back down to earth a little second. We don't know how effective this will be yet. It looks very powerful for Guard, but we don't know if that if it will play out that way in reality. So let's be optimistic, but not stupidly excited. 
you know we should we should uh, we should appreciate the fact that we're probably fucked in the movement phase but that at least we'll be able to shoot them a lot anyway which is good but i don't see how this will help us against armies like tau who will be trying to outshoot us that's something to take into account we don't know how this will help us against tau but anyway let's see what the next reveal will be so thank you guys for watching uh if you guys have any ideas on what you think about this, do you think tactical withdrawals will be viable? Do you think it'll be a waste of time? Do you think we kind of already have that option by, you know, Gar squads getting wiped out and then we shoot the shit out of them next turn, maybe? Um, but, you know, tell me what you guys think, because I think this is, could be potentially be a big buff for us, but I'm very willing to accept that it could be actually really shit for us if someone points out a logical argument for it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.